In August 2013, Professor Mark Post of Maastricht University in the Netherlands created what no one had created before. He unveiled two beef patties in London before a crowd of academicians and the media. It cost Professor Post a whopping $325,000 to create each of these patties, making them the most expensive beef patties in the world. But that was not the reason why Post and his patties made big news. The patties that he and his team created did not come from an abattoir, but were created in a laboratory. Post presented before the audience for tasting the world's first artificially made meat. Now, Post is not the only scientist who's looking to make meat in the laboratory. There are around 30 research teams in various establishments and universities around the world who are trying to create a product which looks like meat, feels like meat, and most importantly, tastes like meat. But then one could ask why we need to make it in a laboratory when we have a thriving meat industry. For a while now, fears have mounted that modern meat production practices are an unsustainable strain on resources. Since the livestock revolution of the late 1960s and early 70s, animal-based foods have seen a massive surge in production to meet global demand. Since the 1970s, production of poultry meat has increased by 700% production of pork by 290%, mutton by 200%, and beef by about 180%. Food and Agriculture Organization says that global meat consumption will grow by 73% by 2050, when the planet's population touches 9.1 billion. Currently, 25% of the planet's land area, excluding the North and South Poles, is used for livestock grazing while another 33% of all cropland is used for fodder cultivation. Now, scientists believe we may have a way to keep pace with this growing meat consumption without much strain on resources and energy. Isolated parts of animals can be made in labs instead of breeding entire animals in industrial farms. In practice, this would mean growing a beef steak or a chicken breast without the cow or the chicken itself. <laughs> Stem cells extracted from an animal are grown in a nutrient base and incubated at a temperature and pressure conducive to natural growth of the cells. A big part of mimicking meat is recreating the mouthfeel while eating it. This implies imitating the volume and density of meat. This is accomplished by providing an appropriate support structure within the lab culture to hold the weight of the developing tissues. Healthy growth of muscle tissue also requires regular movement, which is provided in the culture through electric shocks. Though simple in theory, a few substantial technical and practical hurdles remain. The nutrient base in use is fetal bovine serum, which is the nutrition-rich blood used by a cow to nurture the fetus. This is acquired from a slaughtered pregnant cow, thereby putting an end to the animal-free tag that proponents use for lab-cultured meat. Creating tissue to effectively distribute nutrients has remained another challenge. But the bigger challenge in taking the lab-cultured meat to the dining table is the cost, as evident in the two patties created by Post. Scientists believe that it will take at least seven years before lab meat can be put on your dining table. One question that seems to divide people the most is whether this is an ethical solution to consumption-driven unsustainability. The answer to this question lies in the future, and that is if and only if lab-cultured meat ever hits the supermarket shelves. But until then, it makes for an interesting debate on how to tackle a consumption-driven problem.